Is there any draft today? Is that really work? Hmm? It is, it is deliberate, you know. Yeah. It is deliberate. Even though I'm a black person, <laughs> yeah. It is, it is deliberate. It is deliberate. In your mouth. It is deliberate. You will sadly miss it. I met Mr. Sharp last year and um, when we met, do you know when you meet someone and it's almost like you've known them for years, that's how it came off. The interview didn't seem much of an interview, yeah. it seemed more of a conversation. Let me look into your soul, let me see into your heart and know what you want out of life if, if it is that you're really in need of um, an opportunity to work among you know, the best of the best that they are, they are communication group, and of course, this is the place for you. In my second week here, Mr. Chap brought me to the studio and he's like, all right, Mr. Sean, you're going to read now. I'm like, sir. Was that practice or? <laughs> nope. <laughs> it wasn't practice. He said, if you're going to be a great journalist, you need to be able to be ready in advance in time. And he brought me to the studio and I was nervous, like as nervous as they come. And he was right there in the studio with me and he said, you don't need to be nervous. I'm a regular human being, well not so regular. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he said, but don't be nervous. He always knows how to find a way to break the tension in the room and I love that about him. And I started reading and when I started reading he said, Rupert, you're reading like you're reading a book to some baby. You need to read like you're trying to convince me. And he's like, no, try again and I'm not going to tell you how to do it. You have this in you. And I started reading again and he's like, former. <laughs> And then I, I continued to read and I said, should I start over? He's like, you're asking me questions, aren't you reading? After I completed the, um, the recording, because it was a recording, he said, you know this is going on news tonight, right? And I'm like, what? He's like, yep. So are you comfortable with putting this out? I said, I don't know, I don't think so. He's like, well, that was your effort, I gave it to you. And in the night, I watched myself and it wasn't horrible but he said to me I will never put out anything bad here on JNN oh, okay. but I know you can do so much better yeah. so when I watched it at the time I was okay with putting it out right but he said you alone can see your value mm -hmm. your face is on something and once your face is on something you're the one that's going to get looked at <sighs> from start to finish mr shaw has not disappointed me i remember the day when i came here for my interview i was so nervous mm -hmm. i remember i had gotten the opportunity to, an, to do an interview here before and to my surprise, it was a panel, and it scared the daylight out of me. The second time when I got the opportunity, I was so nervous. I sat in the lobby, I was praying, I was just praying. I said, God, I don't know how I'm going to manage today. And I remember Mr. Sharp greeted me with a big old smile, and just that alone gave me a sense of I was just so calm. When we went inside the room, we started having just a regular conversation, introducing ourselves and the whole world. And he sat with me and he made me feel so comfortable. In my mind, I'm like, all right, cool. I think I'm ready for the interview. <laughs> to my surprise, Mr. Sharp said, okay, um, we're just waiting on um, HR for the paperwork. I said, I don't understand. Because you have no interview yet. I said, we haven't done the interview. He said, that was the interview. I said, hold on, wait, what? Yeah. And he said, listen, I'm unorthodox. Uh, what you're used to, the strict and the, 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 the you know, nerve-wracking interviews, I don't, I don't go out of my way to make people feel uncomfortable. I try to make them relax. When people are relaxed, they are themselves. The last part of his interview, mm. He said to me, 
Um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, I was sharing with him that, you know, um, I do motivational videos every morning. I do okay. motivational videos and I post it on social media. Mm -hmm. So he was like, hmm, motivate me to give you this job. Ooh. That is an orthodox. <laughs> I've never met anybody with his heart before. He's a troublemaker. <laughs> his heart is golden. Literally. He sees your potential. He sees your abilities before even you. He sees life as an opportunity to do just and help other people. He doesn't hoard his blessings, he passes it on. Last Friday I received a call and they said, even though Mr. Sharp is not here, mm -hmm. we want to do something, we want to do this, we want to do a live stream event. How can it be done, even though Mr. Sharp is not here? He's not here. So, the type of person he is, is as if, the organization is attached to him. Yeah. This branch, JNN, is attached to him. But also, he encourages us to work with the structure. Should in case something like this happen. When I think about Mr. Sharp, I remember excellence and destiny helper. Mm -hmm. Because he he always believed in doing whatever you do to the best of your ability, and he also believed in giving young persons an opportunity. He always took a chance on them. So it's like even where other persons are telling you no or they're saying or oh, you're not qualified for this position, he'll say, "Okay, what do you have? Let me give you a chance to prove yourself." Um, for me. I've known him for a long time because he taught me um, from, I studied journalism at NC Kingston campus. And I remember the very first thing that he taught us was the Murphy's Law. <laughs> like he just came in class and he was like, um, did you see Mr. Murphy today? And everybody was just clueless because we didn't know this man and we don't know Mr. Murphy. And it's just like, how am I supposed to know who Mr. Murphy is? And then it's like, he taught us what Murphy's Law is, anything will go wrong and can go wrong if you don't plan. Right. So it's almost as if all through my life I just have that in my head to know that if, if, I, if, I, if I don't see a good result in something, it's either because I didn't prepare for it and what. And also, um, having him as a lecturer and as a boss is, I think, one of the best things ever because it has helped me become a better person, a better media practitioner. Some days I find myself writing stories and I would just be like, what would Mr. Sharp do? And it's so amazing how I'm able to come up with stuff. And I remember even one of the days I was writing a business story and he came to me and he was like, new story for today. What he was saying to me, I already had it like written down and it was so weird. And I said to him, oh well, I already have that, so you relate. And then he laughed, he's like, okay, you're sharp now. <laughs> Because it's almost as if working with him, you get that same energy trans, um, trans, transferred to you. So you also want to be excellent. And for me, it was also different because um, I'm originally from Nigeria. So I went to school in NCU. So he would always speak on me in class and say, your parents did not move all this way across the world for you not to, <laughs> not to be outstanding. You ought to be leading in this class because they made sacrifices for you. And he would tell me how he's traveled to Nigeria to cover like okay. stories and you know, he would always make jokes and pronounce my name and you know, I think he he lived a life of purpose mm -hmm. because he he was able to impact so many lives and he was able to groom so many persons. He wasn't selfish with the knowledge because mm -hmm. we know that media can be competitive yeah. sometimes. Yeah, all hurting. But everybody seems to be more to work. You're keeping the show with how much art is that assessment to his legacy. Right. Uh, let me tell you, we are not just working for ourselves. Right? We have an audience out there and persons are looking out for what is out there. And so Mr. Sharp will remind us all the time that whatever we are doing, 
we must ensure that we are not doing for ourselves, but for persons or audience, because persons are looking for. So we are always reminded of that. There are a couple of things he would always say to us. A lot of them cement um, or cemented in my head. He said, if you're thin skin, this job is not for you. Yeah. And he always spoke about Murphy's Law. He was like, I'm going to turn you into a new person. And I said, I'm not going to have a nightmare dream about him. <laughs> yeah, but he would, he would always encourage us. He would always encourage us. But based on that, when did you realize that he had converted you into a news person. At what stage did you realize that you were a news person? Very early. <laughs> Very early because he would all, every day he would come, Oh, Miss Simpson, what's on the front page of the Gleaner today? <laughs> like, oh, crap. So you had to keep informed? I had to keep yeah. informed. Mr. Shop, I'm going to miss you dearly. Yeah. I wish you could hear me. I hope you can hear me. Yeah. Um, he was more of a father figure to me than a boss. Truth right. be told, he saw more potential in not just me but everybody. He is that person that will light up the room when he walks in. He will tell you as it is. He's not gonna pretty it up, but then afterwards he'll smile and he's like, "All right." So he, even though he's telling you the harsh reality. He doesn't say it in a disrespectful way because he believes in it. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Yeah. And he's always so respectful and graceful as a man. It's just going to be really difficult to move on because he was such an outstanding leader yeah. to every one of us. You know, we're all different personalities, but he was able to ensure that, you know, in spite of the differences, everyone was able to work along, work together, and get the job done because that was it at the end of the day he was very passionate about what he did um, and for me he pushed me a lot to yes. come out of my comfort zone because I'm very reserved mm. <laughs> so he was always on my case you know so I'm really happy that you know I got to learn from him and you know to also push myself to do things that I didn't even know that I was capable of. What stood out to me about him on TV Secretary apart from the news was this is Michael Sharpin, this is your issues live. You know, I would have that conversation, so I it's quite a humble feeling. So we worked with him. He had big plans for all of us over there. Yeah. He had big plans. The truth is we can't say that he died everything he, he he gave so much yeah so to be honest i think he died empty i believe he died empty from from the point of view that he gave everything yes, yes. he gave everything yeah. he had been a filled vessel and had been yes. exhausted yeah. he accomplished so in that sense he served his purpose he did yeah. hence hence he died empty